Hi, everyone. It's Susan Thornton, the CEO of the Cutaneous Lymphoma Foundation. And I'm thrilled to be here today with you, with my special guest, who is Dr. Mary Lee Duquion from CRISPR Therapeutics. And it's really delightful to have you with us today to talk a little bit about the new therapeutic that CRISPR is um, currently working on, and particularly in T-cell lymphomas. So to give our audience a little bit of a background, because this is net new technology, if you will. We'll talk a little bit about that as we get into our conversation. But I'd like to start off, if you would, share with our folks a little bit about CRISPR therapeutics and a little background on your organization. And, and then we'll talk a little bit about kind of how you got into this space and why and all those good things. But let's start with a little background on CRISPR, if you would. Thanks, Suzanne. It's a pleasure to join you. Uh, CRISPR Therapeutics is a global company with its main U.S. operations located in Boston and San Francisco. The company was co-founded by Dr. Emmanuel Charpentier, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in Chemistry, together with Jennifer Doudna, for laying the foundational work for the use of the CRISPR-Cas9 technology as a precise and versatile gene editing tool. Our chief executive officer is Dr. Sam Kulkarni, and our chief medical officer is Dr. P.K. Monroe. CRISPR Therapeutics has currently about 500 employees and has built a new state-of-the-art cell therapy manufacturing facility in Framingham, in Massachusetts, intended to support the production of investigational cell therapies. That's great. So you're here in the US, but you've really um, taken a lot of things to bring this new kind of technology forward, which is very, very exciting. So what's the mission behind therapeutics, uh, CRISPR therapeutics? Sorry about that. At CRISPR Therapeutics, our goal is to create transformative therapies for patients living with serious diseases. We are focusing on four main therapeutic areas. The first one is hemoglobinopathies for sickle cell and beta thalassemia diseases. The second one is immuno-oncology for various types of cancers, solid and hematological. T-cell lymphoma is one of them. The third one is regenerative medicine for diabetes. And the last one is in vivo for cardiovascular and orphan diseases. So you just mentioned we fall into your immuno-oncology bucket of therapeutics. So how did you select T-cell lymphomas? Because, and we'll probably get into this a little bit as we talk a little bit more about the therapeutic and the technology, but you know, T-cells are challenging when talking about this type of approach to treatment. So how did you select T-cell lymphomas to include in your, in your investigations and in your studies? Well, as you know, T-cell lymphoma, there is a high unmet medical need and people who relapsed or are refractory to existing therapies always need new options. CAR T-cell therapy has been a breakthrough in immuno-oncology for various types of blood cancers. Uh, using the conventional autologous CAR T-cell therapy, uh, in which uh, we use the patient's own T-cells to make CAR T-cells, can be challenging for T-cell lymphoma. Um, the T-cells from T-cell lymphoma patients are not healthy, and there is a risk to make, malig to make malignant CAR T-cells. At CRISPR Therapeutics, we are evaluating a different approach called allogenic. This allogenic approach consists in using T-cells from a healthy donor rather than from the T-cell lymphoma patients to avoid the risk I just mentioned. Which is so very exciting, and I think this, we'll talk more about this, but it's such an, a new approach to treatments. And a lot of our patients may be a little bit familiar with that terminology, allogeneic versus autogolous in a more traditional stem cell transplantation type of, of venue. But, you know, this approach is 
really different and exciting, but I know it's also very new technology. So can you talk a little bit about where you are in that um, clinical developmental cycle and where this fits in? So uh, all our CRISPR therapeutics therapies are investigational and are currently being studied in clinical trials. Uh, this means uh, the therapies that CRISPR therapeutics is investigating are not approved by the FDA or any other country's health authority at this stage, um, and safety and efficacy have not been established. For T-cell lymphoma, we initiated a phase one clinical trial in 2020, where we are evaluating safety and collecting data on early uh, efficacy measures. The study is called Cobalt Lymph Trial, uh, and is investigating CTX-130 CAR T-cells in patients. That's very exciting. But just to reiterate, we're really early on in the process right now. And so it's, it's investigational, but exciting to get things started using this new kind of technology. Um, you talked a little bit about CRISPR-Cas9. And I know for me, I hear that term because I attend some of the scientific meetings and it's been kind of the buzz for the last couple of years, more predominantly in the B-cell lymphoma therapy space. But can you talk a little bit about this It's technology, which I think is also different terminology than we're used to when we're talking um, drug therapeutics, right? So this is a whole new bailiwick of, th of treatment, right, than what we may have traditionally been used to thinking about when you're talking about drug therapy. So maybe you can talk a little bit about um, the CRISPR-Cas9 technology. Yes. The CRISPR-Cas9 technology is a very um, efficient, um, precise, and versatile gene editing tool uh, that can be harnessed to um, modify, delete, or correct uh, specific regions of, of DNA. Um, so one of our scientific founders, Dr. Emmanuel Charpentier, uh, was one of the key researchers in the development of this CRISPR-Cas9 technology um, using the mechanism that was discovered in bacteria. Hmm. That's very exciting. So this is really a net new approach to therapeutics from what we've been used to in the past. So you're talking about gene editing, which does sound a little sci-fi to me, but um, what types of gene editing does CRISPR-Cas9 do? So we have a video that broadly explains what CRISPR-Cas9 can do, and let's play the video now. Today, most medical therapies aim to treat diseases by targeting abnormal proteins associated with a disease. Usually, these abnormal proteins exist because of mutations in specific genes in a patient's DNA. In the past, we have not been able to alter these genes directly to address the root cause of a disease. However, a novel gene editing system known as CRISPR-Cas9 may allow us to modify, delete, or correct specific areas of our DNA in order to treat these diseases. The system is comprised of two parts, Cas9, an enzyme that cuts DNA, and a guide RNA whose sequence directs Cas9 to a specific location in the DNA where the edit should be made. Cas9 associates with the guide RNA to form a complex that can be easily and precisely targeted to a desired site in the DNA. The CRISPR-Cas9 gene editing process begins when the complex recognizes and binds to a short segment of DNA adjacent to the target site. This initiates unwinding of the DNA helix, which allows the guide RNA to pair with a specific target sequence in the DNA. If the sequences pair precisely, Cas9 cuts the DNA, forming a double-strand break. Our cells respond to such breaks by activating natural DNA repair pathways. In some cases, a process called non-homologous end joining results in the additional deletion of a few base pairs, which disrupts the original DNA sequence and can cause gene inactivation. A larger fragment of DNA can also be removed by using two different guide RNAs to target separate sites on either side of the desired deletion. Cleavage occurs at each site and the repair process joins the separate ends, thereby deleting the intervening sequence. 
Corrections to DNA can also be made by adding a DNA template along with a Cas9 guide RNA complex. The template is designed with sequences that exactly match the DNA adjacent to the target cut site. Through a process called homology directed repair, the cell uses the template to repair the break, thereby replacing the faulty DNA sequence or even inserting a new gene. Wow, that was very cool. And I'm so glad you had the video because I think trying to describe that in words would be really hard. <laughs> and I'm still trying to wrap my head around it. I probably will need to watch this multiple times to really understand and appreciate what this new technology is. But, you know, maybe in a little nutshell, um, you, you can kind of talk us through what we just heard. Um, because it's, it's really exciting when thinking about this new approach to treating cancer. Sure. So CAR T cell therapy is an investigational treatment in which uh, a person immune T cells are modified to fight cancer. We use uh, CRISPR gene editing to make specific edits in uh, healthy donor T cells to insert a, a sequence of DNA called CAR sequence to express chimeric antigen receptors that will allow T cells to recognize and attack cancer cells. We also make additional edits uh, to consider different safety aspects. Wow, that's, that's pretty evolutionary or revolutionary maybe, um, and a new approach. So what's the hope for this potential in cancer treatments? So while investigating allogenic CAR T cells, uh, we hope to potentially make um, treatments available to a broader group of patients uh, by generating these off-the-shelf CAR T cells that can be ready in the clinic as soon as people need them. So CRISPR Therapeutics is committed uh, to the community, uh, to individuals and families struggling with T-cell lymphoma. Well, this is so very exciting. Thank you for joining us and giving us a brief kind of introduction to this new technology, to what CRISPR Therapeutics is working on and specifically in T-cell lymphomas. And we just so all of you know, this is just the beginning. We're going to, we plan to do some follow ups that'll talk a little bit more in detail about the specifics of the therapy, how it is being applied to the T cell lymphoma set of diseases and a little more details. But I think for now, this is enough for all of us to wrap our heads around um, and to think about. And you might wanna go back and watch a couple more times, especially that video, because I think that is so way cool. Um, the way technology is able now, we've come to this point to really move forward in new approaches to treatment. So thank you so much. Mary Lee, for joining us. Thank you to CRISPR Therapeutics for bringing this new technology to cancer patients and then to us specifically in the T-cell lymphoma world. And we look forward to talking more and sharing more and especially staying on track with how things are going with the clinical trial. So thank you so much. And it's been a pleasure to have you with us today. Thank you, Suzanne. It's been a pleasure likewise.